Hey good people, thank you very much for tuning once again today. I'm so happy guys and I welcome you back to our channel today. Today we're looking at President Trump taking questions from the audience and this is about women's sports in the fan police movement. Guys, let's get straight away and see what Trump has got. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. And now God bless me because I'm going to take a couple of questions, okay? Uh, where are we going to go with the questions? Do we have a mic at some point? Do we have a little mic? Oh, go ahead, please. Yes, yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Girard. Thank you for the shout out yeah, early. Sure. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, one of the issues we are super, super passionate about at the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women is women's sports and keeping biological men out of women's sports and out of women's bathrooms. Right. Um, we <laughs> recently released a statement calling, uh, calling out Chris Pappas and Ann Custer for voting against the uh, Protection of Women's and Girls Sports Act. So how do we ensure that women can compete on an even playing field and feel safe when it comes to this issue? Vote for Trump. That's how you do it. Okay? You're going to have no problem. You got me on that one before it was even an issue. It's the craziest thing. And you know, it's, it's amazing. It's such a, it's a good statement and or question, but so many people, they hear it, they can't even believe it. They can't even believe what's going on with that subject. No, no, you vote for Trump. That's going to be totally gone. Okay? Go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much, Frank Dawson, and thank you for the phone call Hi, three years ago. I remember that, yeah. Thank you very much. You're, you thank are the man. You. Thank you very much. I would like to ask you a question concerning the military. Okay. Do you promise the veterans out there guarantee them that you will make our military stronger as it was before you were pushed out of office and you will return and also make a promise to all law enforcement, all legitimate law enforcement, that you will protect and uh, support them all the way. So I remember the call. I don't know why, but I have a good memory. But I remember the call very much. I appreciate uh, the love with that statement, not just the statement. The answer is yes. We rebuilt our military. We have the finest equipment in the world. You know, we had jets that were 48 years old where the grandfather was flying them. Some of the bombers, the grandfather was flying them, and now the grandson is flying them. Now, we're redoing our military. We redid a lot. As you remember, I made Space Force, and they tried to end it as soon as they came into office, and they had a revolt in the military. We created Space Force. That's the first time in 78 years since the Air Force that something like that's been done, creating a new branch. Uh, so the answer is yes, 100%. You will be satisfied. Not only that, the veterans are very satisfied, 92%. But now, in other words, we had an approval rating, the VA, of 92%. That's never happened before. That's a real job. You know, we got approved where you can fire sadists and sick people. You know, we couldn't, you couldn't fire them no matter what they did. You couldn't fire because of lots of reasons. I won't blame civil service. I won't blame unions. I won't blame anyone. You couldn't fire them. And we got that done. And we also got it done where you can go out and get your own doctor and we pay because some of the veterans, as you know, were online for weeks and months. Some of them became terminally ill waiting to, waiting to get just a very simple procedure or, or prescription. They'd have to wait four, five, six, seven weeks. And we made it, you understand this, those two things were very important. The ability, we fired, I think, 12,000 people. They were sadists. They wouldn't attack these people in prime time, I can tell you. But they were sadists, they were thieves, they were, they had some very bad people, we got rid of them. We, we actually had that passed in the legislature. They've been trying to do it for 48 years. And then on the other, as you know, that was a big deal. If you have to wait online for any more than 24 hours, you have the right to go out and get a doctor, get yourself taken care of, and we pay the bill. And that worked out unbelievably well. You know that's true. That's why they liked us. But the answer is yes. We'll take care of it. Okay? Thank you. Good to see you. Okay? Please. 
If you believe that every human being has the right to life, regardless of age, size, level of development. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Christine Peters, also from the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women. Good. And two of the top three issues that women are concerned about right now are inflation and, inflation and the economy. And um, how do things like the environmental social governance play into um, all of the economic issues that are facing women? Well, they do. And, you know, you have these fanatics, uh, the environmental fanatics. I'm an environmentalist. A lot of you are very, you know, you want clean water. We want clean air. Nobody wants dirty air and water and other things. So, uh, but you have to be reasonable. These people are crazy. They're putting windmills all over the place. They're going all over windmills. The birds are, you want to see a bird cemetery? Go under a windmill sometime. And they're made in China, just so you know, and causing a lot of problems, very expensive. But I will say this, we will take care of this inflation by going and drilling. You know the sign in Con Ed they have Con Edison in New York, utility. They used to have a sign, dig we must, drill we must. We, we must drill. And we did some job. We had, we had it down to below $1.87 for a period of time, gasoline. And what a difference that made. When they came in and they closed everything down, they got rid of Anwar. Anwar, since Ronald Reagan, they've been trying to heat. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Bush couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it done. The biggest site probably in the world, drilling in Alaska, they ended it the first day of the Biden administration. I mean, you think about it. They ended it the first day of the Biden administration, a, a site that would have been almost the size of Saudi Arabia, maybe bigger, and they ended it. But we'll do it again. We can do it again. We'll get it done again. Uh, when you reduce the price of energy, everything else is going to come down. And when everything else comes down, what we'll be able to do is get the interest rates down and we're going to get our country back. Because our country, the way it's going right now, is going into a depression. We're going into a depression, like a 1929 type depression. And we're not going to let that happen. But we're going to drill, we're going to get energy down, everything else. When they held it back, the energy became so oppressive, so expensive, that everything went up and you had inflation at a level that you hadn't seen in 52 years, and it's still horrible. But we're going to bring energy down, way down. We're gonna get the interest rates down. We're gonna get back to a great life. We're gonna strengthen up our military. And we're gonna be able to deal with China and Russia and everybody, and they're not gonna play with us. They're not gonna play with us. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Is it on? Okay. God bless you, President Thank you Trump. very much. God bless you. My name's Christine. I'm from Atkinson, New Hampshire. And engaging with young voters is crucial. Here in New Hampshire, we have American First warriors like Caroline Levitt. How do you plan... <laughs> How do you plan to engage with Gen Z voters? Well, I think we're doing that. And I'll tell you what, you would be shocked, like Charlie Kirk and others, the job that they do with their, with their youth. It's a youth movement. It really is. That's another movement. You would be shocked to see how popular we are on college campuses, much different than what you read, much different than what you hear. But, you know, one of the things about having this horrible thing take place where four years of uh, we've lived in four years of hell in this country in many ways, in many, many ways, more ways than you even know. But one of the things is they have shown how bad they are. And we'll be able to do things now to get it straight out. We have to make our city safe again. We have to clean up our areas. We have to get things going in this country again. They've shown okay, how we'll do one more. How about one more? Go ahead. Now, this is a bad question. Or if I don't give a great answer, I'll do another one. Because, you know, you always, Elton John said, encores are very dangerous. You do a fantastic concert. Everyone's going crazy. Then you do an encore of a song. It's good. Then you do another encore, and the song doesn't work. And you leave. Everyone said, what a rotten job. But you're never going to say that about Trump, right? Let's go. President Trump, my name is Brendan, uh, and I would just like to know, uh, what is your plan for dealing with the growing threat of North Korea. North Korea has been a very a good example of what intelligence is. I got along great with Kim Jong-un. We had a very tough start. I called him Little Rocket Man. I called him Rocket Man. I called him lots of things he called us. And then one day I got a phone call and they said, you know, we want to get together. 
and the Olympics in South Korea was coming up. Nobody bought it. They, they weren't selling anything. And all of a sudden, I got North Korea to participate in the Olympics, and the thing sold out like in two days. It was incredible. We did a great job with North Korea. Uh, we will be able to deal with North Korea. I don't think this administration will be able to deal with North Korea. Okay, one more. Go ahead, one more. Yes, ma'am. President Trump, um, I believe most Americans can agree that the radical left's defund the police movement was destructive to our police force. It's still going on too, by the way. Absolutely. What, when, when you are president, what will be done to correct the uh, getting our police up to par with proper training, with proper numbers, and, um, and get them back on track? So you're talking to the right person. We are taking care of our police. I did, you know, when I was in office, we had billions of dollars worth of Army equipment, Marine equipment, Naval equipment, billions in storage rooms all over the United States. And Obama didn't want to get it out because he said it looked too tough. It looked, it didn't look good to give it. I said immediately, get it out. I gave billions and billions of dollars. You know what I'm talking about, all of this uh, ex-military equipment, it was incredible. And for safety, including trucks that were armor-plated, I gave it all to the police. We got it out. We were sitting there drawing dust, but very valuable stuff. We took care of our police. We are going to take care of our police, and we're going to make sure that we support our police, because our police can solve the problems of our cities instantaneously if you let them do their job. And we love our police, and we love our firemen and everybody else that does. But we have to support them, and we can't have them be afraid that if they use one wrong word, their life is ruined. We can't let that happen. And you know, one other thing, they do an incredible job, and you have bad apples. Every once in a while, something happens. It shouldn't happen, and we have to understand things like that can happen. We have to support our police. These are great American patriots. They used to do a job, now they're not allowed to do the job. We have to allow, especially in our cities that are rotting and decaying, we have to let our police back. We have to let them do the job that only they can do. They're fantastic people, and we are with them, and we're going to help fund them. We're not defunding, we're going to fund our police. Thank you, great question. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. Uh, it's an incredible, this is an incredible place. This was a great day. I enjoyed it so much. I want to thank Steve and all of these incredible endorsers, because that's a record-setting endorse. But I want to thank you all. God bless you all. We'll be back. God bless you all. That's good. Wow, that was an incredible session with President Donald Trump. I like how he answers those questions. And uh, this is, uh, when I look at him, he's a very bright person, very intelligent from the way he answers those questions. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching and see you again next time. Please press that subscription button so the next time you will be able to get these great videos. Thank you and see you again.